Designing big boats means different attitudes mixed together. It's a complex process that involves coordinating very different skills without renouncing quality at the flick of a pencil. Carlo Nuvolari and Dan Leonard have put their names to some of the most beautiful boats in the world, with a studio created in the early 90s that's been evolving ever since. Right now, they're working on a mega 106-metre yacht and a 120-metre motorboat. They've also had a series of boats as projects, like the Monte Carlo line of yachts for Beneteau, which have built on their experience with V2, Mochi and Marquis. Passing through their studio door is like entering a dream world, just that here the dreams are real. Is there one of your boats that you can say has been a reference point? Or has led the way, been really innovative? Well, I'd have to say that various projects have been from different sectors. One of the latest ones has been Alfa Nero, a boat that I would say has changed the way mega yachts are designed. What we try to do is project what the client is looking for. Nowadays, we are anticipating rather than reacting to clients' wishes. Beh, things, objects. I'm not talking just about boats, but houses too come about through a team or group that generally knows what it's looking for. Normally, though, with boats, the clients come to us, tell us what they want to do with the boat, but don't know how it's going to turn out. Would you say your studio has one distinctive characteristic? Well, we try to set a good example. <laughs> A seafaring boat, not an immobile boat, not a piece of real estate, nor an exercise in style, but a boat for its own sake. That's definitely a strong characteristic of our boats. We don't ignore the fact that a boat has to work, to move across water, and isn't fixed to the spot. You are some of the principal players in pushing boat dimensions to the max. Just how big do you think these boats can go? We always try to suggest not too big, but clients are always asking for even bigger boats. Sicuramente c'è un fattore di ego che cerca di far aumentare le dimensioni. E anche forse perché la barca è vista. It's definitely an ego thing, always looking at larger dimensions, also because the boat is seen as a happy island, the place where you feel free to come and go in complete privacy, which isn't so easy to find nowadays. Am I right that I also saw a sailboat 100 meters? 106. 106. Well, to sum up, this is really going to be a sailboat, actually sailing, with a sail that's not just there for decoration. With this huge mast and sails just for aesthetic sake, this is going to be a proper sailboat that will be able to cover many miles by sail. The sailboat. A true sailboat with working sails. And we're talking a speed of 18, 19 maybe, even 20 knots. You can't go any greener than that. <laughs> Is there any difference between working for a boat owner and designing for a series, do you think? Technicamente è appassionante lavorare per il prodotto di serie perché senti la responsabilità. Technically, it's more intensely fun, 
working on a series of boats because you feel responsible for creating the whole fleet, not just the product. It's never about just one boat, but at least two to three models, which you need to have an overall plan for before you start on the first one, because the project is going to go on for a number of years. When you work with just one client, though, everything happens at once, which means that the client and the user are the same person. So instead of thinking of lots of people, you just have to think about them. Which one means more innovation? And not just the obvious technical innovation, but aesthetics, innovations in language and solutions too. Whichever, they all need a good idea, the best idea, that idea that hasn't been thought of yet. And that not thought of yet idea in the Alfa Nero, what was it? Cut the volumes and create an object, a boat that invites you on board, even when you are already on board. For the most part, on boats this big, after you've embarked via the gangplank, main deck or main bridge, whatever, you're on the main bridge. La percezione della dimensione della barca, il momento in cui sei salito a bordo, perdi. Above, you've got the ceiling, and in front of you, there's the door. You don't feel you're even on a boat. Entri nella barca, è solo lì che ti si apre la barca davanti, praticamente. Proprio togliendo sti volumi di On Alpha Nero, as soon as you board, that's when the boat opens up to you. We've taken away the space of the stern and making this beachy area with the swimming pool. You get the sense of volume, even when you're on board. The room is full of material, cloth, Explain a little about the internals of mega yachts. La parte più personale della imbarcazione, direi. They are the most personalized bits of the boat. A client will have more ideas about the internals than the outside. In fact, we are very open to their ideas. Tutti abbiamo esperienza di auto. Auto li vedi ore e ore ogni giorno. Ne hai una. We all have lots of experience with cars. We're around them every day. You've got one, and you see all the others. So in terms of car style, we're all more or less experts, no? In terms of house style, it's difficult not to have had any experience as we live in urban areas, unless you live in Siberia, of course. So we've all had experience with architecture, but not so many have had that experience with boats. Not many have any know-how, no. So they tend to lean on us more. We offer solutions to things they want. We take what they are asking for and package it up like they want it. Have you got a story about the most expensive thing you've got on a boat? Well, not a part of the boat, a piece of it, a piece of cloth maybe. Noi non facciamo quel stile. L'equilibrio, quello che è la ricchezza più riconosciuta di quello. We don't do that type of style. Equilibrium is the richest thing that we work with. There isn't anything here that is particularly costly or expensive. Gold. Really, we don't have clients that are like that to tell you the truth. So nothing like that has happened before then. Una vasca da bagno tutta dorata, non non l'abbiamo mai vista io. No, we haven't ever come across the golden bathtub. Well, I haven't anyway. I see on your desk you've still got the old ink pens, wells, weights. Weights, yes. To look pretty, or do you actually still use them? Sometimes, less now though, as mechanical design takes the needle weight. But you can't do better than the wood one. L'avviamento che ti dà il legno è unico. Poi si copiano dentro i programmi CAD. The CAD program does everything nowadays, but it's always a good thing to start your first lines by hand, whether it's just a sketch, correction, 
or final copy. It serves as the link between your brain, your thoughts and the objects that you are thinking about, the machine. Your design assistant is always there for you, so you need to talk a specific language, learn that language that you can instruct the computer to talk for you. But that means it's a mediator, whereas your hand is immediate. Your ideal boat, holiday. Well, my ideal boat would have to be one that carries me from A to B. It would have to have lots of outside space as we are Mediterranean and use the boat in the south. Not so much inside space, big outside area and a tender, which is also a sailboat. I like to sail the Rivas, where you can just throw down the anchor. The others would swim and I would have an afternoon on my little sailboat. That would be my ideal boat, which doesn't exist on the market. But I would love it if someone let me design it. Then I would buy it. So what's it like to work with Dan? I could not work with him. Thank God we met. But we are completely opposite in how we are. He is the thinker and I am the grumpy engineer. Ultimately, the pessimist that sees everything as numbers and facts and calculations. He is the idealist who is a complete optimist. So consequently, we clash a lot. But I think it's necessary union that results in really strong projects. For example, he begins a design and I continue to tell him that everything he wants to put on his 50 meter boat won't fit. It needs 60 meters. So in the end, we develop a great 55 meter boat. Disegnare le barche che siano piccole unità da 7 metri o grandi navi come quelle che nascono in questo studio. Designing boats that are smaller than 7 meters or big ships that come out of this studio is still a very manual operation, intuitive. You start off with a blank piece of paper, pencil, and an old style table where the first ideas come from, from the client and architect. It's only in the second wave that you get the industrial process, the computers, dynamic calculations, and 3D designs. So how does a boat start its life then? In this studio, on your table, what are the first steps? Well, really, it starts with discussions between Carlo and I. Lots of discussion. But we talk with pencils, talk through ideas with sketches, and then tests that might come to be future projects. 3D projects come way after. Idea non nasce in 3D in computer, però per molti designer nasce proprio in computer perché The idea doesn't start in 3D on the computer, but for many designers it does because the computer 3D hides the facts that they are missing the idea. But it's sort of like if someone started to compose music on their smartphone, you can do it. In fact, after 2 months you're pretty good at creating elevator music. Same goes for 3D. It lacks warmth without an idea. This may be the most famous ocean goer. The boat that we made for Spielberg. Not seen often, this is the official photo. How did the name of the boat come about? Seven Seas. Well, the initials stand for Steven Spielberg. Who has seven children. Some from the first marriage, some from the second, and some adopted. To which he himself said, my kids are like the Seven Seas. Massively different in personalities. Lo scopo di sta barca era riunire i fili che ormai alcuni sono già sposati, alcuni sono piccoli. So the boat is a family boat, which is the goal of bringing the kids together. 
con me lavorare con Carlo. So, what's it like to work with Carlo? Sai cosa? Io non ho nessun paragone, ho sempre lavorato solo con Carlo. Do you know what? I don't know anything else. I've only ever worked with Carlo. Before I got to know him, I'd never worked, was too young, a student. So I didn't have any other experience. So working means working with Carlo. What does luxury mean in your eyes? Tempo. Tempo. Tempo di poter fare altre cose anziché lavorare. Time. Time to do other things that aren't work. The more time you have, the richer you are. Certo, soldi possono comprare il tempo, però pochi sono in grado di... Well, OK, it's true that money can buy you time, but there are very few people who are able to spend money on time, because if their work consists of accumulating money, it's almost contradiction to give it up in order not to work. So, <laughs> are you a bit of a sailing enthusiast too, then? Io nasco come velista. Difficile nascere come un motorista perché a dieci anni non puoi andare in giro con la barca a motore. I was born a sailor. It's difficult to start off in motorboats because at ten you're not allowed to go around in a motorboat, so everyone starts off with a sail. Non è l'unico. Io sono quello più. Sailing is a very lovely way to go to sea, but it's not the only way. To be democratic, I would say that any boat is a great way to sail the seas. Per mare è perché. Io amo il mare, non è che amo solo le barche. I love the sea. It's not just that I love boats, it's the sea. So boats are the method to get to where I want to go. I see that you're interested in the America's Cup, that book over there. Quella Coppa America mi piaceva, perché mi piace la vela che è vicino alla I like that particular America's Cup because I like sails that are close to the sailors. Catamarani ultra tecnologici hanno portato via on the boats, the ultra-technological catamarans have taken away the idea of sailing for the person who loves sailing. I mean, you can love sailing, but not be passionate about fast catamarans and the America's Cup. It's another world, like for Formula One. Long way from the ordinary car user, no? You know, I wrote this. A <laughs> uh, big surprise, in fact. Me l'hanno regalato collaboratori in studio, infatti. È stata una cosa... My fellow workers from the studio gave it to me for my birthday, 40th, I think. <laughs> what would you design if you didn't have a budget or idea limit? Budget, abbiamo sempre un budget. Quindi, la mia barca, senza limiti di budget. It's always a budget, but my limitless budget boat would be 16 to 18 meters long that could go anywhere on holiday. And you, Dan? Una cosa che mi ha lasciato segno era Calypso di Jacques Cousteau. Something that's always stayed with me was Jacques Cousteau's Calypso, which was a research boat, an ocean-bound biomarine boat. Non aveva la componente di yacht, ma mi è piaciuto molto il fatto che era libera. I really love the fact that it could go anywhere. It needed a daring owner who didn't have the budget limitations and who could sustain something like it. It would be lovely. And it would be very interesting to work on a project like that. A world unto itself, wrapped up in the shape of a yacht.